Hello, this is Thomas and one is PY, and today in my project, I'll be showing you how each and every radio signal has its own story and how they can be very unique and interesting. Take this one for example. So you may think it's just a, rad a random radio signal from a source far away, but let me tell you more about it. If you love science, you've probably heard about the particle accelerator in Switzerland. It's a very large device, and it accelerates microscopic particles, and then they collide. Some experiments are ran to test what happens when they collide, to look for things like antimatter and new chemical elements. It's pretty cool. This kind of cool experiment doesn't always have to happen in the particle collider in Switzerland. The observatory in Arecibo, Puerto Rico conducts similar experiments, except that the particle collision doesn't happen underground, but in the atmosphere. After a little bit of research, I can tell you the story behind that radio signal that I started with. Here's how it works. At the observatory, there are five powerful shortwave transmitters. The most powerful AM transmitter in the US uses about 50 kilowatts of power, and these are five units running 100 kilowatts each. That's a lot of power. Right above these transmitters, there's a big mirror carved into a mountain. That's the kind of mirror that large, world's, world's biggest observatories use. The signal from these five transmitters is combined into an antenna in the middle of the mirror, and not only that, but the mirror is used to focus the signal into the ionosphere. The ionosphere is one of the layers of the atmosphere, and is the one that does not allow HF radio signals to pass through it. It reflects them back to Earth. So this very, very powerful combined signal is beamed straight up into the ionosphere like a blowtorch. Some also call this device an atmospheric heater. So when this happens, scientists conduct all kinds of experiments to see what particles get heated up or released, or what kind of energy is produced. The first time I received the signal from this experiment, it looked like this. This is just a plain CW or continuous wave. I can see, I can also see from the signal that the bandwidth it used was razor sharp, sharper than my radio resolution. The next day I tuned, I tuned it again, and this time, instead of a continuous signal, the experiments used a series of pulses. They sounded like this. signal on my SDR, I could see a nice graphical picture also.
my project for today. Behind every radio signal, there is a story, and some of these stories can be very interesting. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on my next project.